So if you remember, we did a video a couple weeks ago, which was about the Spectrum 128K, uh, which I picked up uh, a couple of years ago for a Christmas present. And I said there's going to be a, a second part to this video, which I'm very pleased to say that this is it. Um, and the Spectrum story sort of continues. In fact, in a way, this sort of followed on about six months eight months after that and happened sometime during the summer of last year just to sort of bring you into sort of the pictures to what happened um i where i work there was a gentleman who was retiring um last year and he'd happened to speak to one of his friends who worked there as well who was also sort of taking a more reduced role and he said he had something that he wanted to sort of sell on ebay or, or move on or whatever it was and his friend said oh don't don't to get rid of that speak to to me because i collect those sort of things so he got in contact with me and said oh i think i might have something of interest to you um and he said you know you can have a look at it and see how it works and what it what it's like uh, maybe we can work something out so not usually these sort of things happen to me i tend to sort of just pick up the other bits and pieces other people don't want uh this was rather an unusual thing which sort of fell in my lap so i've agreed to sort of say okay i'll have a look at it and see, and see if it's any good or not and then nothing happened for a couple of months, and all of a sudden I'd, I'd more or less written it off and thought, oh, it's never going to happen, is it, you know? And then I got a phone call out of the blue saying, oh, yeah, I'll pop along this afternoon and bring, and bring all the stuff with me. And he did, bought a, 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 a small crate of stuff, and I couldn't quite believe what I was looking at. I knew what I was going to be getting. So what he did was bring along one of these which is, now remember the first one I showed you was a 128, this is a Sinclair ZX Spectrum, and this is the uh, 48k version, and this is absolutely magnificent, I mean you can just see here from the box, just, just how good that looks, there is obviously scuffing and a bit of a bump there, but generally speaking to see something like that, I'll just show you the back as well, just brush some of the dust off it because it's been sitting in the bedroom, um you can see there it's absolutely in really really quality nick i don't usually get stuff like this you know usually i tend to be quite happy with the unboxed um consoles and computers but this this was something special so what i'm going to share with you now is a bit of an unboxing i know they're very popular on the internet people like to see what you're getting for whatever it is now as you can see here cardboard very much in good nick I'm just going to squeeze this out of here. There we go. So there's the box. Lovely jubbly. Just put that down there. And as you can see, we have the polystyrene inserts. And again, look at that. I mean, that is beautiful. Nick, really, isn't it? You can see the Sinclair logo on the top. Let's turn it that way. There you go. Very, very few bits missing out of here. And then we take the top off. And as you can see inside, just have a look at that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Wow, look at that. That is beautiful, isn't it? That is what home computing back in the 80s was all about. Um, and I was really surprised, because obviously I've never actually owned one of these before. So that's really important for me. I couldn't quite believe just how small it is. I mean, there's no weight to that whatsoever. Nothing there at all. It is absolutely brilliant. I'll just show you the front there. You can see it's got the... The rubber key pads on there which are always very very uh, um, synonymous with the spectrum you've got the logo down the side there to show you the back and as you can see there's the expansion port there there's where the power goes in you've got um, a microphone and a headphone socket and also the connection for the television nothing on the side and you can see underneath there not an awful lot to do. I'll give you the serial number as I always do, which is S01 046258. And that is it. I, I, I'm still stunned about how small and compact that is compared to something like the Commodore 64, which was much, much bigger. Absolutely unbelievable. Now, the rest of the stuff inside the box was um, even more, whoops, even more exciting. There's the power supply there which has got uh, the original plug still on you may i'm going to take it out because it's still in there um as with the spectrum 128k video i showed you um there's the manual and also underneath there as well you can see uh, the rest of the cables in there again all beautifully presented one of the great things about this when i picked it up was um 
there were some bits with it as well just trying to find out where it was I can't find it that's the manual anyway it's got all the coding bits and pieces inside you can see all sort of technical information which is way beyond my uh, tiny brain I'm afraid um, and also uh, there's an introduction booklet as well again very very good condition nicely done I'm sure there's ah now there was I wanted to show you this because this really really sort of set it off for me inside I'm not going to show you all this um, there's actually a handwritten receipt there I'll just show you that that's a handwritten receipt which tells me that this was purchased from a shop in the West Midlands on the 14th of the 12th 1984 just show you that at the top there 14th of the 12th 1984 the original handwritten receipt um, doesn't tell you how much it was paid for but fear not because we have one of these inside now for those of you who aren't quite sh rem won't quite remember this and I'll just uh, show you half of it this is actually I'll show you the back of it this is the credit card receipt <laughs> which if, you, if you're new to this sort of thing or you're of a certain age you won't know what one of these are basically of course nowadays in the cash society you pay for everything by card and it's all done Back in the day, if you pay something by credit card, and this has also got um, the old access logo, of course, they don't exist anymore now. But what you used to do, hand your card over, and they get this great big whopping machine out. They put your card in, put some paper in, and go pff, pff, like that, and then it would print the receipt, and that's done. So that is in there. So that is the original receipt and credit card receipt for the purchase. I think that's a great little thing to find. Um, it, really, it really sort of sets it off for me because that all of a sudden. Sort of gives it, I know it's like not provenance, provenance, I mean, it's all about antiques, you're talking about history and where you got it from. This just shows that, you know, this has just been kept in its box, everything's been kept in here, brand new, and that now is going to be at some point later on this year a 35 year old purchase. And it's just brilliant condition, it really is. So I was absolutely chuffed to see it was in such cracking nick. I'll put that back on there. Also, what came with it as well, now you'll notice that. Um, when I showed you the 128K, if you're getting on new to sort of old uh, 80s um, computing, the 128K had a tape deck built, in, built into it. If you know the Commodore 64, you'll know that you'll buy a data cassette to attach to it. Spectrum didn't have anything like that at all. So what you needed was one of these, which is a computer data recorder from Alba. And again, apart from a bit of bashing around the top there, this is really, really nice. And I'm just going to see if I can remember how to open this up because, um, ah, there we go, opens off the top. And again, you can see inside there, polystyrene inserts. Um, there's also something really good. So there you can see, I'll just take the ends off there. And as you can see, there it is. And it's in wonderful condition. Again, I always look for this sort of thing. The eject button. Wow. <laughs> Military precision. Look at that. Badang. Superb. Um, and it's also got the level meter on there, which you need to set, which is when you're trying to find the right frequency that the game would load. Don't forget, there's no guarantee that when you actually load it, if it would load first time, you'd have to mess around with the settings and fiddle around with it. Uh, also, as well, which is, again, another nice piece to find, is actually... Uh, the original registration card for this um, Alba guarantee. Again, the model number is R-170, serial number HK-9112029 and um, there we go. Guarantee wasn't filled in at the time. It may have been filled in, I don't know, there might be some missing off there. Oh, it opens up actually, there we go. Oh, it's actually folded back on itself. But yeah, that's the guarantee for it. I'm not sure they sort of hold on to the warranty now, it might be a bit out of date, but um, isn't that lovely? Absolutely lovely to see that in here in, this, in that condition. Of course, what I've done is I've taken the inserts off. I can't actually get them back on again. Tell you what, we'll play around with that later when the video stops, shall we? You know what happened with the last video? I was around with it. So, to get that and the Spectrum in that, that condition was, well, I was blown away. Even more blown away by the fact that it came with a, a load of software with it. Now, some of this software is going to be a bit sort of, I don't know, it's very sort of specific. 
which gives me a bit of an insight into my, my, my former work colleague as to what sort of games he, he purchased at the time to play. Uh, so I'm just going to go through this, but first I'm going to show you something else, which I just remembered was down here. And it came with a joystick, and I'm absolutely delighted to get one of these again. Um, this is the Competition Pro 5000. Now those of you again and playing modern games and we used to using joy pads and wireless pads and all this. Um, this is completely different. Um, I'll just get it out and show it to you. So there it is, Competition Pro joystick. You've got your two fire buttons on the front, which don't sound great to be honest with you. I'd expect a bit more a bit more to them than that. Joystick is stiff as anything. It really is not a lot of giving those at all. Um, but I, you know, my, my uh, joystick of choice back in the day was a Zipstick uh, Pro for the Amiga, which was a very similar sort of thing. They had like yellow square buttons on there and was, I think, much nicer than that. But the great thing about this as well, if you watched my last video, you'd have mentioned about the fact that uh, the 128K had the ports rewired on it so they would only take certain joysticks um, and you needed an, an adapter. Now, what actually came with this, I didn't realise at the time, was. Um, the Kempston joystick adapter which plugs into the back of the expansion port on the Spectrum and then you can then plug your controller into that and you'll be able to use your joystick to play it. Bear in mind that of course Spectrum if you look at remember we didn't there weren't any joystick ports at the back of it you've got the Mega, uh, got the uh, Commodore 64 you've got the ones down the side and the same with the updated Spectrum but this one had nothing so this would have to go in the back plug your joystick into it and you'll be able to play. Otherwise, you'd have to use the keys. Now, bear in mind, my hand-eye coordination is not what it used to be. In fact, it wasn't very good to start with. So, for me, something having something like that is an absolute godsend. So, I didn't even know that was in there until I got it home and opened it up. So, absolutely thrilled that that's there. You also notice that this actual uh, joystick there, you might not be able to see it, it cost £22.95 from Boots. Yes, Boots used to sell computer games. I think they didn't, they didn't do many of the console. I think it was more sort of home computing, so they were doing the 8 bits and the 16 bits. I don't think they ever got into the Amiga stuff. I, I could possibly be wrong. There's also a, a lovely blown up diagram, blow through diagram there of how the joystick works. Lovely to see. And again, re, you know, a bit of bashing on top, but a really, really, really um, nice piece of kit there. So, on to the games. As I said, there's some strange stuff in here. got to be honest with you not all of it is going to be um something that i'm, I'm sort of probably going to get into which is going to show here which is a uh, first one up combat links by Dural software again you can see the back no screenshots so you've got absolutely no idea what it's going to be um nice big clamshell case though and it's also got as you can see nice manual on the inside take the manual out and then there's the cassette there Yes, boxes actually came in that size, and, and you know, as we'll go through, we'll see even more. Um, I've got Driller, which is, uh, you'll notice it says uh, featuring Freescape. This was like a, I suppose, I say vector, it's like a 3D polygon graphics, which you probably won't get a good idea from if you look at the back there. Um, it moves slow, but I remember playing the Amiga version not that long ago, and I thought wasn't so bad actually it was pretty good um back in the day that people used to rave about this game and in the, i think there was a couple of others as well i can't remember what they were called um you can see it comes with the manual which is in really good nick um range of controls as well and also some loading instructions and in between that giant box just the one tape for it but those, these were quite state-of-the-art games back then there was you never thought to do something like that on, on, a, on a slow 8-bit computer. They weren't designed for playing games. But those games, the Driller, I can't the other ones that were called in that series. I can't think of the top of them yet. I should have researched it beforehand. But they, they were really good. Um, this one I was really interested to get only because of the fact that um, this is the Armageddon Man. I've actually got this in the same case for the Commodore 64. So there's some screenshots on there. But I've actually got the same game for the Commodore 64. I couldn't quite believe it. Um, and you've got the instructions and the tape on the inside there as well. So I'm already getting a feeling looking at those three that, that my friend was very much into sort of um, strategy games. We shall see what else we've got. 
Right. Oh, I can keep pulling these out. So there's quite a selection here, but um, all sort of different ones. Uh, so again, keeping that theme, so we've got Flyer Fox from Bug Bite Software, which is a uh, can you pilot the world's most advanced defensive jet, fast and furious, a 3D arcade simulation with speech and high resolution graphics speech on a, on a tape game. I mean, that was something which was completely, completely out the left field when we had those. Um, there's a software starter pack. Um, interesting software cassette for ZX Spectrum includes a comprehensive keyboard trainer and an entertaining and illuminating range of programs. They're very good. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how illuminating and interesting they're going to be. Um, Star Strike, which was a, looks like it's a budget release. Again, it looks like it's uh, some sort of strategy sort of space strategy game just see if the screenshot at the bottom there you can see it was priced at 2.99 as we went through before that's how much a lot of software cost back in those days um spectrum chess which i'm guessing is going to be chess and not a adaptation of the tim rice andrew lloyd Webber musical um nope it's chess um fighter pilot only the best become a fighter pilot according to the blurb uh, from digital integration um, 3D graphics, air-to-air -air combat, and fully aerobatic performance. Yeah. Um, to improve the brain power, s Trivial Pursuit. I love Trivial Pursuit. Um, on the inside, that nice instructions, couple of tapes as well. It is Trivial Pursuit. There's no screenshots on the back, but you know what it is. I did a, a video years and years ago on the Commodore 64 one, which had like a little, which I quite enjoyed. Um, it's quite a nice little game that one. I hope it's the same. Um, this one's interesting. I've never seen this one before. Blitzkrieg, which I think is obviously related to uh, the German uh, attacks of the early stages of the Second World War. The uh, Sieg wird unser sein, and uh, that's really badly pronounced. So it's probably to all the German viewers out there. Um, but it simulates the attack in May 1940 when the Low Countries and France were overrun. Uh, you can man five German armies by a unique system of three cursors, which enable you to set up a line of advance. Uh, from Casey's Computer Software, 1987. Uh, know nothing about this game at all. So, in fact, a lot of these games I know nothing about at all. Um, you can see there, manual. Everything is, is in really good. It's a little bit of a come away of the plastic there, but generally speaking, a lot of this stuff is in fantastically good condition, given the age of it. Of course, one thing I'll take all these out. The the crates, I've got to put them all back in again, of course. That's always a bit of fun. Come on, let me it. Pull these up. Oh. Right, so this is some of the free stuff that came with it, I'm guessing. So there's a, an office database. Um, and then there's a oh, electronic worksheet. I, I love spreadsheets, so that'll be interesting to see how you can work something like that into a, a modern sort of day thing. Uh, home accounts all top software this and a word processor as well so yeah you, you can still do these things on those sort of computers um something called um vegan attack i thought that said vegan attack to begin with that's quite topical at the moment isn't it but it's not it's called vegan attack um and it's a, some sort of space uh, game by the looks of it uh nine levels of play from easiest to hardest and it's a keyboard only so that's really i'm really going to struggle with that really going to struggle with that uh, one which most people will probably recognize um there you go star wars yes may the force be with you this is a conversion of the original uh, vector graphic arcade game doesn't run so well on this on, on the, the, the uh eight bit computers uh i got a lot of play out the amiga version which was pretty much arcade perfect they had to be uh, considering how powerful the amiga was and, and what where this came from um so i'll be interested to see how that comes out i did do enjoy uh, the, the original star wars arcade game so that's a, a nice one to find in there. Um, fans of flight simulators, I love this one. This is Ace of Aces. And again, you can see some graphics on the back there. Again, very well known name from the back in, game from back in the day by US Gold. Uh, a unique opportunity to experience the magic of flight and exhilaration of aerial combat. I think we can guess where my friend was going. My, my work colleague was going with his uh, interesting um, things. Um, Alien is a computer game from Electronic Dreams. Electric, Electric Dreams. I think this was the um, 
the better one of the two. A couple of games that came out at the same time. There are some screenshots to me. There's some screenshots. Film. It also said it features a free map including stills from the film. Oh my god. It's still in here. Wowza. There you go. And you can see down the bottom. No shots of the aliens, but um, there's some. Yeah, and also a list of instructions on the back. That's good, isn't it? That. Just be trying to remember which way it was folded up. There we go. So that goes back in there. So that's, again, good to see. I, I like finding stuff like that in there because it's in there originally. Um, it stayed in there. Again, it shows it's been looked after and cared for. Whoops. As he says, dropping the next one. What's that in there? Oh, it's an instruction manual. Okay. I'm coming across on this stuff the first time. Uh, this is back to the front, but this is um, Shadows of Mordor, which is the second game from the Lord of the Rings. And there's a scratch at the back. So I'm guessing this is going to be like a text adventure. Um, but according to uh, Popular Computing Weekly, uh, this is one of the most advanced original and involving text adventures you'll ever play. I'm not a fan of the Lord of the Rings, so um, I don't know. Oh, speaking of Lord of the Rings... There's the original, look at the size of that case there. Wow. That takes about six six PlayStation 2 games, the width of that. Uh, this is game one of Lord of the Rings, and I was really disappointed when I opened this up. I shouldn't be disappointed because it's got the two cassettes and then instructions, but according to the blurb on the back, it says this contains two cassettes, the detailed user guide, and also a paperback copy of the Lord of the Rings the official the ultimate hint book and it's not in here which is a real shame um ah if that had been in there been brilliant i don't, I don't like lord of the rings i'm running out of space now um but if that had been in there that had been awesome Ooh. some more stuff oh dear nearly at the bottom right what have we got here uh Saul Moore, which again looks like a space game uh, beneath the blue sun beneath the, beyond the surface lizards beyond the tunnel of death the evil vard has captured a colony of infant zor so they're making it up as they go along uh, you can just put loads of sort of things and people buy it so yeah i don't know anything about that one um not to worry <laughs> It's only survived 30 odd years and, and I've just broken it. No, it's alright. Um, Monopoly on the uh, spectrum, obviously. Why did I say that? I don't know. Um, yep, I don't think I've got a computer version of Monopoly apart from the Wii. I think I've got a game on the Wii for Monopoly. Uh, this one's got a bit of. Bleh. Yeah, not so nicely looked after that one. A bit of mould on the inside there. Ooh, not nice, is it? I'll show you that. Yeah. yeah. A bit of water damage on that one, I think. Um, but yeah, it's it's all in there. Instructions and the tape. There you go. Might require some fungicide on that one, possibly. Let me move those. They're in danger of falling over. Um, oh yes, 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 yes. Horace goes skiing. Yes. If you remember my Christmas, my Christmas I'll show you my Horace T-shirt after Christmas. I've got purchased, which has got that very blue graphic on the front of it. So. Hopefully, at some point in the future, I will load this up and play that wearing my T-shirt for the full Horace experience. I think it was three or four Horace games. Horace Goes Skiing, Horace in the Caves, um, Horace Goes to Sainsbury's, and Horace um, Against the Cold War or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so Horace Goes Skiing. Um, this one's an absolute classic. This is Checkered Flag. One of the oldest uh, sort of racing games there is to have. I think it was an arcade game. In fact, I think, think when, the, was it the, when the Jaguar came out, there was a version of Checkered Flag for that. Bear in mind, there's probably some like, 10 year difference between it, and they're still trying to pedal centuries old games as, as sort of new releases. Um, we've got Monopoly, so it's only fair enough we have Scrabble, which is in a slightly better condition than that one. I like that. You see, can't, can you see that? In, yeah, on, that, on the tape there, that's. Ooh, nice. Um, yep, so it's. Scrabble. Test my word power later in case I bump into Susie Dent. Um, Science Horizons Survival. Again, I'm not sure if that's related to the ITV 80s um, nature documentary series that was on. Again, 
one of those lovely sort of embossed cases uh doesn't look like that's ever been used that manual uh but it does say on the back it says discover it's like to be an animal in the wild um choose to be a lion stalking your prey and escaping human hunters or be more adventurous as a hawk a mouse or even a butterfly searching for food and avoiding deadly predators that does sound quite interesting that does sound interesting um this one i think is quite interesting. make a chip which is um not a chip shop simulator uh, again all of those lovely cases again doesn't like it's been used uh, but this teaches you the basic elements of circuit design shows you how they fit together and then lets you design and test your own circuits now there's somebody who's a complete duffer at this sort of thing um that does sort of go oh i could I'd, I'd be interested to see how that works when you've designed a circuit you can give it inputs and outputs and your zx spectrum will check it for you wow it's a fascinating way of finding out how computer logic works well that's brilliant so yeah I, I, that's that, that might be an interesting one to play that uh, last few now the one I dropped on the floor a few moments ago uh, was Steve Davis Snooker, which sold bucket loads back in the day, if I remember. Um, obviously, been playing the Spectrum <laughs> in limited colour. For those of you watching at home, the in black and white, the pink is the one next to the red, etc. Oh, and then the last few, and again, more interesting war type simulators. We've got D Day from Games Workshop. Um, so again giant case not a lot on the inside um, and it's, it's basically sort of uh, the game D-Day is a superb graphic simulation of the invasion with four battlegrounds two based around Khan and two based around Arnhem and uh, again you can just see it's very basic strategy stuff if you, you obviously in Games Workshop if you've played in Games Workshop stuff uh, then you know it's all sort of turn-based strategy so that's it um and, and just because we aren't getting enough war games out of this what about the battle of britain so i could do blitzkrieg the battle of britain and d-day war gaming for the spectrum no gra oh there are some graphic shots actually it looks like there's some um art real-time simulation um strategy and also uh some flight parts to it well being the battle of britain you'd expect there'd be something like that um there's the manual and love these absolutely giant cases really uh, are absolutely fantastic aren't they there's actually also the battle of midway um and theater europe also as part of this series did i play theater no, i played no i didn't play theater europe. i played something else very similar at three to go um more flight simulator with ace again if you've um if you know your, your sort of early mid 80s flight simulators ace was one of them uh, there's also a sequel called ace 2 ironically actually if it's, actually if it's ironically they could have called it ace 3. oh there we go now what's that he says coming across this for the first time i'm not able to read it because there's no light on it stand stand holder on screen close close one eye line up lens and type in the code oh i'm guessing this is ah now this i'm guessing is probably one of those early um sort of protection codes to stop people copying software because back in the day the software piracy was absolutely rife um within gaming and companies would usually put a protective code on or you'd have to go to the manual or and type in on certain page a certain number a certain uh, word that appeared you know it's like for example uh, type in the word on line four fourth across or something like that you type it in and the game would start so i'm guessing that is going to be something uh, like that i've never seen that particular one before um but it does sound absolutely fascinating there's some back shots for you pardon the expression and hopefully that won't fall over i shall just do that minimize the impact and crashing around um their finest hour which again i think is battle of britain oh yes all the excitement and tension of the battle of britain um on a spectrum again no f um, features whatsoever on there but it does tell you icon driven menus make the game f easy and fast to use um so i think it's a case where you're just sort of organizing it and there's a giant map as well wow look at that look at the size of that it's a bloody great map there you go 
them going to disappear from view here. There you go. Giant map. Wow. And again, looks in really nice condition. It's never been unfolded in like 40, 30 years, and, and here I am messing around with it. So yeah, all, all present and correct. There we go, so that's uh, another really interesting fine game I've never heard of before. And then finally, Talisman, the Magical Quest game from Games Workshop. Again, looks like it's a text-based adventure with the graphics at the bottom. And then just over up the inside, there's the inside of the box and the manual. So that was all the stuff that came with it. And given to me in the summer of last year to see what would happen. Uh, if I can get it, you know, started up, see what happens, and um, we discuss prices. Now, as always, there is a slight sting in the tail. The Spectrum doesn't work. Please take a moment for that to sink in and spare a thought for that wonderful piece of technology which is now completely defunct. Uh, it turns on, but it won't actually sort of go through the stages to get to the Spectrum screen so you can start it. Now, having done a bit of research about this, it's not a completely lost cause, although it would be to somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, i.e. me. So, for Christmas, um, the very lovely Mrs. Retrobet decided that uh, to sort of satisfy my curiosity was to buy me um, some RAM chips, which should... <clears throat> I use my soldering station, purchased especially just for such an occasion. And I could actually, um, with some guidance, try and solder it back together again. I'm hoping I will be able to do so because all this stuff, I can, I can use it on the 128, which is fine. The games I can use, but I'm really, really concerned about the Spectrum. If I can get it working, fantastic. Then everything's an absolute... Happy days are here again, you know, sort of thing. But, worst comes to the worst, I can always um, gut the Spectrum and then put a, an, an emulator in there and just, um, you know, uh, load up a, a Raspberry Pi or something like that with Spectrum games and just use it as a, you know, sort of, or even just use it as a display piece because the whole thing is in absolutely belting condition. Uh, so when, when he came in to see me shortly afterwards, um, I had to give him the bad news. And I said, look, it won't work. I said, there are ways of getting around it. I said, but I don't think I'm going to be able to be able to get it done. And he looked a bit disappointed, but he said, he said, you know what? He says, keep it. He says, if it's no good, says, you know, do what you want with it. He says, if you want to throw it away, throw it away. If you want to keep it, keep it. He said, that's fine. So all that was given to me um, for free, which is really nice. Um, and I'm really grateful. He also mentioned that his son had a load of like 16-bit um, console games still in the boxes and things like that, which I've not heard anything about, and I'm probably not going to hear anything about either. And they'd be well at my price range anyway. Uh, I, even just to see them would be fantastic. But as like I said, I haven't seen him. Um, he's not been in contact with us for all six months or so anyway. So I'm, I'm not going to sort of hold my breath on those. It'd be nice if they came along, but I don't think they will do anyway. Um, but to get this as it was, everything boxed up, everything's really good. We said we've got maps for the games, we've got really good instructions. Um, it's just a shame the bloody thing won't work. But fingers crossed, if I can perform, 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 perform some open heart surgery on this Spectrum, I may have a standard chance of getting it working. And I think I owe it to that, because this is the computer for many, many people which started their interest in gaming. For me, it's an iconic piece. Um, and I think it was a piece, not as a, as a computer, I think it was a piece, as a piece of sort of history. That if I can get it working, then all things being equal, fantastic. If I can't get it working, not to worry, there's something I can do about it. And if I can't do something about it, then I'll just keep it because it's really nice. And, you know, there might be somebody who can do something with it, I don't know. So I'm definitely going to hold on for it for the time being. If I do get an opportunity to play around with the insides, I'll obviously try and post that. But... Yeah, I thought that was an interesting aside to it. You've got the 1 to 8K, which works perfectly fine. I've now got the, the joystick adapter so I can start playing the games on it. I've still got all this stuff here, which I can I can still use. There's some good games in there, some really weird, that's so weird, 
um, sort of specialist titles, which again I've heard nothing about. If anybody knows anything about these titles or knows um, if they're you know worth getting into or, or they're collector items or what have you, please let me know. That'd be really good. Because there are some real sort of um, knowledgeable guys out there on the Spectrum stuff, and, and I just don't know enough about it. So that'd be nice to hear if you know any, anything about some of those games I've shown you there uh, that I'm not sure of. So it's going to go into the collection. Um, quite how we sort of go from there, I don't know. But I really wanted to share that with you. I've been trying to do this video for the best part of about five months now, um, which is um, pleased to have done. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing that as well. And it sits nicely alongside the 128 stuff. So for Spectrum Enthusiasts, I hope these videos have been really interesting for you to see. Uh, from my point of view, I hope you really enjoyed uh, me sharing them with you. And on that note, um, it's time for me to finish. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Thank you very much indeed for tuning in. If you do like what you see, then you know what to do. We've got the subscribe button. We've got the comment button. Always lovely to hear what people want to say. Uh, we've got the like button. Uh, if you do enjoy the video, please do share it around. And also uh, do uh, click the bell so you get notifications of new videos when they go up online. Uh, I tend to specialise mostly in pickups, but I also show off my collections that we've been doing today uh, and also the odd bit of gameplay as well. Um, so once again, thank you very much indeed for watching. I do hope to see you again very, very soon. Uh, but for uh, myself, Retro Bear, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you soon.